Hello again, my name's John, I'm a retired cook from the northeast of England in the UK and welcome to my latest bread video. In this one I'll demonstrate how I make this simple crusty farmhouse loaf and I'll be making it in my cast iron Dutch oven. You can also make this bread in a ceramic casserole dish. I'll show you an example of one a little later in the video. And here's a list of the simple ingredients you'll need to make this bread. Add the strong white bread flour to a bowl and I'll explain what I mean by strong white bread flour. It's flour that has a high protein count. If you check the ingredients list on the side of the flour bag you're looking for at least 12 grams of protein per 100 grams of flour. And as you can see this one contains 12.6 grams. That's the same as saying this bag contains 12.5% protein which is more than strong enough to make bread dough with. And typically all purpose or plain flour only contains 10% protein which is ideal for cakes and biscuits but it's not strong enough for bread. Right we'll get started straight away by adding the flour to a bowl then add the salt and thoroughly mix it in before adding the yeast. And the best tool for this is a whisk. Now add the yeast and mix that in too. If you're using fresh yeast, just dissolve it in the water before adding the water to the flour. I'm using instant dried yeast but you can use active dried yeast too. But make sure your yeast is alive and well before you start the recipe. I have a test you can do on my sandwich bread video. I'll leave a link in the description box below this video. Next add the cold water. I'm using cold water in this no knead recipe because I don't want the dough to rise too quickly. This improves the flavour, structure and texture of the finished bread. Now add the oil and mix the dough until it all comes together. You can use a stand mixer to do this initial mix but in real time this only took me 90 seconds to do. And as this is the only mix it's hardly worth using your machine. Right, once it's all together, cover the bowl and let it rise for 45 minutes. This is the first of two 45 minute rises in the bowl. Ok, that's the first 45 minutes up and the dough has risen a little but not a great deal. But don't worry, that's normal, that's due to the cold water. If you like you could let this first rise happen overnight in the fridge and the bread would taste even better. But for the sake of the video I'll use this method. It will still be a fantastic loaf of bread. Now slightly wet the bench as shown and with wet hands give the dough a few turns. This is only to smooth the dough and to even out the temperature. Then get it back into the bowl, cover and set the timer for the second 45 minutes. You should see a big improvement in this next rise. This folding technique I'm using is a classic French method of kneading dough and it takes a little practice. If you're struggling with it, just fold the dough over itself a few times the best you can and that should be fine. Now this is my well seasoned 5 quart or 5.5 litre cast iron dutch oven and it's absolutely brilliant for making bread in and it's what I'll be using to make this particular loaf. You can however use a ceramic casserole dish like this one as long as it has a lid. The lid is essential in this method of bread making as it keeps the steam locked inside the pot which believe it or not creates that crispy crust on the bread. Now to transfer the dough to the hot dutch oven you'll need some kind of vessel. I'll be using this 8 inch or 20 centimetre wok and it's in the wok where I'll do the final 30 minute rise. But before the dough goes into the wok it'll have to be greased. I'll be using a knob of lard, you can use butter 
and for belt and braces I'll also add a teaspoon of vegetable oil. Also this is the best way to apply the sesame seeds or whatever seeds you're using. But for me sesame seeds gives the bread a lovely nutty flavour. You can add as many or as few as you like. Some other seeds you could use are poppy, sunflower, pumpkin, black and white chia. There's lots to choose from. And this is a great way to apply them to the dough. Right, the second 45 minute rise is up and as you can see the dough has risen much higher this time. It seems a shame but it has to be knocked back and folded again. So, do exactly the same as the first rise, only this time it goes into the wok instead of the bowl. Right, I'll give the dough a few turns just to knock the gas out of it. If it sticks to the bench a bit, just use a scraper to release it as shown. And if you haven't got a scraper, may I suggest you get one, or even better, get two because they're one of the best and handiest tools you can have around the kitchen. Now this surface will become the top of the loaf so I'll add a little extra water to help the seeds stick to the dough in the wok. And all I do now is cover the dough with a lightweight dry tea towel. But before I do that I'll sprinkle a teaspoon of flour over what will become the bottom of the bread. This is just to stop the tea towel sticking to the dough as it rises. Then I'll set the timer for 30 minutes. Now this time may vary depending on the temperature of your kitchen. But you'll get an idea on what it should look like when I transfer it to the Dutch oven a little later. Okay, if you're using a cast iron Dutch oven like mine, these pots take about 30 minutes to get to temperature. Which in this case is ideal because that's how long it takes for my dough to rise. So set your oven to 230 Celsius, that's 445 degrees Fahrenheit and get the pot straight in. If you're using a ceramic casserole dish, that only needs 10 minutes to get up to temperature. Right, the dough's risen and the Dutch oven is up to temperature and it's time to start baking this bread. A little word on safety. Remember, you're dealing with very hot metal here, so treat it with the utmost respect and care. And you can clearly see how hot this pot is by the smoke. And that smoke is just the vegetable oil burning off from the last time I seasoned it. Whenever I'm finished using the Dutch oven, I always give it a very thin coat of vegetable oil before I put it away. And there's lots of videos out there on how to season cast iron cookware. And this is how much the dough has to rise before putting it in the pot. And like I said earlier, mine only took 30 minutes to get to this stage. Yours may take a little longer or indeed a shorter time depending on the ambient temperature of your kitchen. Now tip the dough into the Dutch oven and if you greased it well it should release with the help of a couple of taps. Sorry for the camera shake. Now give the dough a couple of swirls to centralise it and put the lid on and get it back into the oven and set the timer for 30 minutes. Once the 30 minutes are up, reset the timer for an extra 5 minutes. Then very carefully remove the lid of the pot and set the timer away. This is to add some colour to the top of the loaf. And here's a little safety tip from our commercial kitchens that you can use at home. Train your family that if you see a white cloth or tea towel on a pan or in this case a lid there's a chance that this surface is very hot and to keep off. Right, that's the last five minutes up and now you can carefully take the bread out. And the first impressions is it looks absolutely wonderful.
Now carefully tip the bread out of the pot and get it onto the wire rack to cool. If you tap the bottom of the bread with the side of your thumb, it should sound hollow like a drum and that's a good sign that the bread is done. Ok, it's about an hour later and it's time to have a look inside this loaf. And of course, do the all important taste test. As you can see, it has a great looking crumb, that's the bubbles in other words, sort of in between a sandwich bread and the ciabatta bread. It also has a nice crispy crust as you can hear, and it smells fantastic. For appearances, you could have scored the top of the loaf just before it went into the oven, but I prefer this rustic cracked look. Right, enough of waving slices of bread about in front of cameras. It's time to get some of my homemade butter on and give it a try. And if you'd like to know how to make this creamy butter yourself, I have a video on my channel showing you how. I'll leave a link in the description box below this video. And once again, it tastes absolutely wonderful, as you'll find out if you try this great farmhouse loaf recipe. Another example of simple ingredients coming together to make something incredibly tasty. And up goes the thumb for another favourite. Oh no, it's trying to escape. Gotcha. Well, thank you again for watching. Please like, share, comment and subscribe by hitting the circle above. If you do subscribe, activate the bell icon next to the subscribe button on my channel page. And by doing that, you'll be automatically notified every time I upload a new video. And in the meantime, here's a few of my other videos you may want to watch. So, until the next time, be safe in the kitchen and bye for now.